Donkey Kong Country. The name itself gives many a raging nostalgia boner, what with the mood setting music, lush environments, and the, 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 the orangutans and bikinis? Hmm. As a kid, the graphics blew me away, and even now, I'm surprised with what they could fit on an SNES cartridge. For a long time, I thought of Rara being way ahead of its time and incapable of failure. <clears throat> even its music held up incredibly well, its fan base has created more remixes than any other franchise that doesn't involve robots or role-playing games, carpenters, blue rats, I guess. The entire series is great in my eyes, though I, I never really played the Donkey Kong Land games, and while I won't bother you with my personal rankings for each game in the series, I will analyze them to the extent I see fit, and you're going to accept my take on it. <clears throat> um, sorry, I don't know what came over me. In the series, you control one of two prime apes, each game introducing one new one. There's Diddy, Donkey, Dixie, and Kitty. I haven't played Tropical Freeze yet, so whatever. I'll get to what each of them do in a sec, but right now I'm going to talk about my indifference toward Diddy. Diddy's just kind of there. I mean, he is faster than the others, so speedrunners love him, but aside from that, what does he offer? He can't do this, or, or this, or this, or this, or this, or this, or this, or, or this, or, or this. I mean, he could do this, but so can Kitty. And everybody can do this. Yeah, I know that in Donkey Kong Country Returns they gave him his jetpack and his peanut pop gun like in Donkey Kong 64, but Dixie hovers in the new one now and the peanut pop gun doesn't even damage things, it just makes him dizzy. That's neat, but uh, he, he feels like an extra character that you're punished to use when your good character dies. He is pretty awesome in Double Dash and Mario Power Tennis though. Oh yeah, and I guess he's one of the most used characters in Brawl tournaments or whatever. Anyway, all that aside, we begin with the first series, Donkey Kong Country. It opens with a decrepit old ape using a Victrola to play the classic Donkey Kong tune, and... What? What's this? The, a young, hip, muscular Kong isn't having it and he wants to party down with a then-modern boombox? This is so 90s and I love it. Even the extended eyeballs make me think of Rocco and Ren and Stimpy. You play as Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong in this one, a gorilla and a chimp, respectively. A mean old croc named King K. Rule raided your stash of bananas and you gotta go kick his butt to get him back. The gameplay is solid, the animations and controls feel very fluid. I mean, I grew up on this series, so it's obviously gonna feel like second nature to me, but eat me, it's my review. You can jump on enemies to kill them, or you can pick up barrels and chuck them. Even swimming feels fun, since there's no worry of oxygen, and though it can be treacherous, it never feels unfair. Yeah, like that. There's cool little secrets all over, most of which give you lives or letters, which become an extra life. It's pretty cool. It even tells you after you clear a level if you notice that you found all the secrets by adding an exclamation point to the level's title. The bosses are simple enough, you either jump on them a few times or hurl junk at them. The beauty really is in the simplicity of this game, nothing complex or drawn out here. Just keep going right. Find the secrets if you want, and kill all the crocs and armadillos you want. Hey, what the hell, ride a freaking ostrich, I don't care. At the end, if you got all the things, you're rewarded. With a percentage of 101%? How does that even work? Did I find more than the programmers intended? Y you know what, it's fine. Smash Brothers can give you a million billion percent. Why can't this game give me 101? No biggie. Right? But yeah, that's it. You get a number for your file. No extra ending, no extra levels, nothing. I mean, I feel great that I beat the game and found everything, but I don't know, it, it feels empty. Now on to Donkey Kong Country 2, Diddy's Conquest. Arguably the best in the series. The title screen's a bit less inspired, but whatever, let's get into it. In this iteration, we get Diddy Kong and his girlfriend, Dixie. She seems neat. She can't kill baddies by jumping on them like DK, but oh well, because now I can throw fucking monkeys! She carries barrels over her like DK, which is useful sometimes. Oh, and she can fucking glide. And now when you clear the bonus stages, you get creme coins, which can be cleared up with penicillin, and used to unlock more stages, and... <sighs> a secret ending? So anyway, K. Rule's back, but as a pirate instead of a king. He now goes by the moniker Captain K. Rule. His last battle felt freaking epic when I was a kid, and it took so many tries to memorize his patterns. Now when I fight him, it's like going through the motions. But whatever, man. Donkey Kong fucking uppercuts his ass all in Mortal Kombat. After the ending, you get ranked based on how many DK coins you have, not to be confused with creme coins. And if you got enough, you get to take the pedestal as greatest video game character of all time. In Cranky's eyes. Wait, are, are those Sonic's shoes and Earthworm Jim's blaster by the trash can? <laughs> Classic. Honestly, if I had to rank these games based on their music, this would easily be number one, which is saying a lot because all of these games have amazing music. And now number three, 
Donkey Kong Country 3 Dixie's Double Trouble. That doesn't sound provocative at all. In this iteration, you face the evil Dr. K. Rulenstein, and I've got a sneaking suspicion that I've seen him somewhere before. What? No, I'm, I'm not racist. I do not think all overweight crocs look the same. Shut up! Many often consider this to be the worst of the originals, but I disagree. It kept a lot of the things I loved about DKC2 and added some more things, like more collectibles, tradable items, and a pretty ridiculously hard version of Lost World now called Krematoa. Yeah, I get the overall tone of the game seems a bit off compared to the others, but to me it still feels great. You still get to toss crab, jump on bugs, and collect coins. Also, you get this. love this song. Anyway, you beat the final boss who is again a total dick. Rescue Donkey and Diddy, and if you collected enough bonus coins, you get to fight him once more in his secret submarine lair. And if you get all the banana birds, yes you heard right, you get the super special ending where you free the mother of all banana birds and she aborts one of her fetuses in order to place K. Rulenstein in minor inconvenience. Bravo, you truly are mother of the year, ma'am. All in all, I absolutely adore this series, and I plan on buying Tropical Freeze as soon as Bill Gates sends me my money. The music is beautiful and memorable, the characters are lovable, and I'm a collection whore. It's just tons of fun for me, even if it sometimes feels like I'm going through the motions. On that note, upon bringing all this information to light, it occurs to me that games I once loved lost their charm once I mastered them. For example, Ocarina of Time, Super Mario RPG, and Donkey Kong Country 2. It's probably part of the reason I love DKC3 so much, since I never fully mastered the game, but it still contains DKC staples. Though that doesn't really explain why I don't love the first as much as either of the other two. I don't know how my brain works, leave me alone. If, for whatever reason, you still haven't played these games, and this looks like something you could get into, do not hesitate another minute. Find a way to play them, legally preferably, and have yourself a blast. Eh? <laughs> you, you get it? Eh? Play the game!